John Paul II didn't let two personal tragedies harm his relationship with God. Rather, he let God work through it. Hello, everyone. This is Father James Kelleher with Liturgy Prep for Wednesday, October 27th. Today, I'd like to focus on the first reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 30. The first verse reads, The Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we don't know how to pray. Isn't that amazing? Do you think about how you pray? You know, many years ago when I was uh, writing a doctoral dissertation in Rome, Italy, it was at the very beginning of the course of studies, and I knew I was taking off a big, big project. And in one of the books that I'd brought with me, I found this little prayer card that had a prayer to the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I started praying that prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to guide me as I did this doctorate. Well, you know that as I'd go through chapter one and need help, I'd pray that prayer and find a passage I needed. And particularly when I started chapter five, I was really lost. I didn't know where to start. So I did the Holy Spirit prayer and I had a big bookshelf with like at least four shelves and a there were probably 50 books on that those four shelves. And I knew I needed some book in that sh bookshelf to help me, but I didn't know which one. But I did the Holy Spirit prayer, and I just walked up there, pulled one off. I said, maybe this is it. Looked at this table of contents. said, maybe it's in chapter 7 of this book. Went to that page, read the first paragraph, and I go, wow. This is right where I need to start, chapter 5. That was a total gift to the Holy Spirit. But it illustrates how precise the Holy Spirit desires to be in our life. He wants to act very concretely. So let the Spirit work. Find a, your own favorite prayer to the Holy Spirit and pray it. And then the second verse in Romans we want to look at today is, all things work for the good for those who love God. Wait a minute. What if you're married? What if your three-year-old son somehow falls into the swimming pool and drowns? How is God going to draw good out of that? That's a tough one, isn't it? But actually, God does draw good out of those situations. No one wants their three-year-old child to drown in a swimming pool. You know, it's a great tragedy. Everybody suffers greatly. But those who look for God's way of working and drawing things out, a lot of times a family tragedy like that can pull a family together, it can cause them to have a greater appreciation for each one, and they can even begin to forgive each other more easily because they realize how precious each day of life is. There's no guarantees on how long you and I will live. And then this makes me think about Pope John Paul II. Do you know that when he was nine years old, his mother died? And so he was left with just his father and his older brother, who was about, maybe about, I think he was about eight years older than John Paul II. So John Paul II, at nine years old, was facing that great loss. And then when he was 12 years old, his brother died in an epidemic. So now it's just John Paul II and his dad. It's not easy just being a father and a son. But fortunately, John Paul II and his dad were very close, and they used to pray together at night. They used to kneel down. They shared a bedroom. They just kneeled down and prayed. And sometimes in the middle of the night, John Paul II would wake up, and he'd look over at his father's bed, and it was empty because his father was kneeling at the side of the bed at three in the morning praying. That was a powerful witness. John Paul II didn't let two personal tragedies stop him emotionally. John Paul II didn't let two personal tragedies harm his relationship with God. Rather, he let God work through it. He let God draw good out of it. And that's why we call John Paul II John Paul the Great, Ave Maria.